Hello everyone and welcome to Ancient Souls Awakening Channel with me, Prophetess Nasaret Bawa. And I am so happy and grateful that you are here joining me today on this beautiful channel. On this channel, what we do is we cut through the spiritual and religious BS that keeps us locked into a powerless identity. I am a certified spiritual life coach, certified energy healer, certified yoga trainer, and prophetess for source energy. And I am here to give you a pathway to your soul's awakening through the ancient wisdom teachings of our ancestors, ancient ascended masters, spirit guides, and angels. I have applied the knowledge that I have learned to be able to transform and change my life. Now, before we begin, I want to express my gratitude for the growth that I've experienced on this channel. But when I checked my analytics, it looks like that I have a lot of people really enjoying my content, but not liking or subscribing. And really, when I looked through my past videos, I realized that I have not been asking you to do that. So if you would please take time to like and subscribe and grow this community and share this video if it resonates with you. Now, I wanted to make this video because I received a really hurtful email. It hurt my spirit. It hurt my heart. And I just weeped a little bit inside for the nonsense that people are being told. So let me read this email. First of all, I loved it because the subject line is soul. And so it says, hello, people told me that my entire soul is not in my body. Can, uh, can you do to me a soul retrieval? And I replied back to this person. I apologize that you have been told that. Uh, if you are physically typing an email and you are asking for help, I assure you that your soul has not left the body. And more importantly, that is absolute poppycock and impossible it is impossible for the soul to separate from the body as long as you are bringing in breath so if you still breathing honey your soul is intact now we can get disconnected from the soul we can detach ourselves much like a power cord might detach from a household outlet but the electricity is always there and so today we are going to talk about what the soul is in ancient wisdom teachings i'm going to give you some symptoms of you being disconnected from your soul as well as give you some strategies to be able to fix it and if you are feeling disconnected from your soul, it is time to schedule a soul wellness check, Ashe. The soul wellness check is a 90 minute session in which I energetically and spiritually scan you and figure out what's going on. And then we put together a written personalized plan. You'll have about a eight to nine page guide that you will walk away with with some strategies of how you specifically can get disconnected from your soul be, uh, reconnect to your soul because we all have different reasons for why that may be happening but rest assured beloveds you are being lied to bamboozled or you are simply being guided by someone who is leaning on spiritual dogma and not on facts. So let's talk about it. I want to really reiterate that this idea that the soul leaves the body is absolutely erroneous and it is absolutely dangerous because it disempowers you and gets you to believe that you are separated from all that is divine. And keep in mind the negative energies and uh, entities, that is exactly what they want to convince you of. They want you to convince you that we live in a separate plane where everything is separated. No, 
There's no separation. There are shadows that give the appearance of separation. But beloved, you are never separate from the divine. You are never separate from your soul's entity. You should know that. Now, because this channel leans on ancient wisdom teachings, I'm going to highlight a few of the ancient wisdom teachings, some of which I am intimately because I practice and some, you know, that I did a little research because I wanted to see what, what, what the deal was. So let me first deal with my, my uh, one of the traditions that I integrate into my experience, and that is the tradition of Ifa, of the Yoruba people. Now, you should know that in most ancient wisdom teachings, the soul is very multi-layered, made up of these varying layers. In uh, some traditions, we say that there are nine layers to the soul, right? So the soul is not one thing. In Ifa, we sort of look at the soul as Ori. Ori is your personal deity, your um, your divine connection to all that source. It's the immaterial part of yourself that acts as a holder and a database of all your experiences through space and time. That's a very basic level of Ori because in this tradition, we are also taught uh, that Ori has several different layers. And I believe I have a video where I spoke about the different layers of Ori, which I will put in the chat here so you can be able to view that. It's very important for you to know. Now, in ancient Egyptian teachings, we see uh, some lineages teach that there are really five parts to the soul. Ka being the life force that animates the body and Ba being that part of your identity, of your individual identity that gets to really travel back and forth from the material and the immaterial plane. In ancient Chinese wisdom, we see that there is reference to the yin and yang energy as the soul, which they would call hun being the more yang part of that energy and po being more of the yin energy. And in India, we have, you know, Atman and Brahman. Atman being that ultimate ethereal higher part of yourself that is unchanged and deeply connected to the divine. And it is the ego or the identity with materialism that really begins to cast shadow on that ultimate being. Now, we also know now because of quantum science that we live in a quantum world. And the fundamental underlying message of quantum physics is that we are all connected. Everything is interconnected and nothing can be divided. Nothing is inanimate on this planet. Okay. So a lot of quantum science is already teach, uh, catching up, I would say, with our ancient wisdom teachings. So what do all of these different teachings have in common? You, your soul can't leave your body. Okay, if you walking around and you breathing and you you can be disconnected, you can be not aware of your soul, but do not allow anyone to disempower you by telling you that you need to go pay somebody or do anything in order to be connected to have your soul come back into your body. Now, the whole idea of spiritual coaches and religious uh, coaches and prophets and prophetesses are to help those people that are disconnected from their soul essence be reconnected to it. So let's talk a little bit about some reasons of why you would be disconnected from your soul in the first place. Now, the reason that we experience this perceived disconnection is partly because of trauma. It's because of our continued behaviors to keep doing the same things over and over again and expecting something different, Ashe. 
So I'm going to run through about 10 signs and I'm going to read these so you can just mark them off and see if it's not that you are experiencing that you have no soul, you're soulless or that your soul has left you. That is impossible, beloved. Your soul is in constant bliss. There would be no reason for them to leave you because to the soul, everything is for your liberation. Even your disconnection is your guidance and uh, to go back. Okay, beloveds, don't let people disempower you with spiritual bull and religious bull. Pick up a book. Understand the energy that you live in. Understand the force field around you so you don't get caught into nonsense. Practice this shit. Don't just listen to me. Don't just listen to anybody. Practice it. Put it to the test. Number one. Feelings of being numb, empty, or hollow. Number two, feeling depressed, anxious, or hopeless. Feeling alienated, feeling isolated and misunderstood. Feeling stuck, trapped, or directionless. Feeling confused, conflicted, or fragmented about your reality. Feeling fearful, angry, or resentful. Feeling guilty, ashamed, or unworthy. Feeling powerless, helpless, and victimized. And feeling addicted, feeling compulsive, and feeling obsessed with something. Those are all signs that you are disconnected you aren't aware of you aren't tapped in tuned in to the person of who you are and that is what those feelings are even there to tell you so that's why the soul would never leave you because the soul knows that eventually you will wake up to the reality of who you really are i said in that email even if Someone is in the state of being catatonic, which is a, almost like an emotional suicide. Something that's extremely per pervasive in my ancestral line. Even in those times, the soul is there. The only time the soul separates from the body is at the time of transition when your body stays here but your soul and your spirit and all of that stays intact this is why i can most prophets and psychics and different things can be able to tap into these varying levels of soul consciousness to give you a pathway back to who you are it literally is the work of connecting with your quantum partner aka your spiritual partner aka your mystical match ashe and we see that this is a viable way of us moving and connecting with spirit because of different Gnostic texts. We have the Gnostic text, which is the exegesis of the soul. So here we go, the female soul. The sages who came before us gave the soul a feminine name. She is also feminine in nature and she even has a womb. So then it goes into the fall of the soul. While the soul was alone with the father, she was a virgin and androgynous in form. When she fell down into a body and entered this life, she fell into the hands of many robbers. So this really talks about how the, mat, the feminine energy embodied here on this planet this you see this all throughout the gnostic text with sophia coming down following a light to figure out where this light is coming from and she and her uh you know some say it's a mistake and she was being reckless and some say it was all a part of the plan it just depends on what you think so when sophia came and embodied here people were not connected to their spirit their holy spirit they had actually been disconnected from it and then when you are disconnected from it much like this person who emailed me you can become the uh the tool of robbers these shameless men passed her 
one to the other and violated her. Some raped her, others seduced her with gifts. They defiled her and she lost her virginity. It's interesting how ancient this text is and we still see society doing the same thing to feminine energy. In her body, she became a whore and gave herself to everyone. And she considered each sexual partner to be her husband. And this we see even in the Gnostic text. We see how Yahshua, when he was speaking about how the uh, farmer had the seeds and haphazardly threw them out. And some fell on good soil, but most were eaten by birds or burned up by the sun. And so we are getting another imagery here about how we violate spirit when we focus on the material. And focus on the material is one way that all of those different states, those 10 states with trauma and depression and hopelessness begins to occur because you are so connected to the material, you do not believe or understand that you are actually a mystical being. So it says that these shameless men passed her from one to the other and violated her. Some raped her, others seduced her with gifts. They defiled her and she lost her virginity. In her body, she became a whore and gave herself to everyone. And she considered each sexual partner to be her husband. After she gave herself to shameless, faithless adulterers, after you continue to give yourself to material plane, to things and people and circumstances that don't honor your divinity, that don't honor the fact that you are a true human and a divine being. And that's where we have to gather that back in. And it says after she had been faced with her shame, making everybody her husband instead of the one true divine source. When you are in lack or perceived lack, who do you make your husband? Who do you make your wife? Are you seeking and leaning on other things outside of source energy? I've done it. Are you whoring yourself for love? Man and women, you can both do that. Are you whoring yourself for a corporate job? Are you living outside of your divinity? What are the husbands and the robbers that you are giving yourself to? And it says, but when she turned her face from those adulterers, when the spirit when you as your true, you are the soul, beloved. And when you take focus off of the one true source, nature, energy, God, whatever you want to call it. And you put your focus on all of these material distractions. You yourself cannot operate in embodied wisdom which is what Sophia means. It means wisdom and wisdom is embodied knowledge. That means that you practice and you apply your core values to the adversities in life. So when she turned her face away from all the trinkets of the material plane and she stopped running after others and they made her live with them and serve them in their beds as if they were her masters. She was ashamed. And then with that shame, she thought she dare not leave them. And for a long time, they fooled her into thinking they respected her faithful, true husbands. She had been deluded into thinking how many of us spiritual women or spiritual men connected ourselves by someone who appeared to be in alignment with source energy. And then when you connected with them, you realized they was the biggest devil out there. Some of them is on pulpits. There's preachers out there disrespecting their wives, beating their wives. Not honoring the feminine. When you dishonor the feminine, you dishonor the Holy Spirit, Ashe. She became a poor lost widow 
She was helpless and no one even gave ear to her in her pain. She got nothing from the adulterers except the filth they left when they had sex with her. The children she had from the adulterers are mute, blind, sickly. Now I'm gonna tell y'all just a little nod. The divine feminine is really also admonishing her daughters, the keepers of the womb, the portals to this planet. We are the keepers. We're, we're the portals to the planet. And this is also reminding us as divine, divine feminines not to continue to hitch ourselves to partners that continue to act as if they serve the one true God, as if they are. Even if you follow Pauline theology, Pauline theology tells you that you are supposed to love your wife as Christ loves the church. So if you treat your wife poorly, Maybe that's why you are not operating in the fullness and abundance of joy. You think because your bank account is full that you operate in fullness and abundance? Oh, no. No, 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 no. So in the text, it says that once she came to the realization that spirit, it says her father on high noticed her. And he looked down on her and saw her sighing in pain and disgrace and repenting of her prostitution. How she had given herself to all of these things that were not of source energy. And then she began to call on him for help. And I love that. Do you see how she in her infinite, she felt the one true source energy be able to call down to her look come to me beloved don't turn away doesn't matter what you've done that's why we so judgmental against people we don't want to forgive man source energy even with all of that turning away Source energy said, come. And when she felt source energy calling her back, she felt the one true divine nature calling her back. She asked for help and she sighed with all her heart and said, my father saved me. Look, I shall tell you how I left home and fled from my maiden's corner quarters. Restore me to yourself. When he sees her in this condition, he will consider her worthy of his mercy. For many afflictions have come upon her because she left home. We are suffering many afflictions because all of us are disconnected from our individual souls and the soul of humanity, which is born of love. There is a path back, beloveds, and we have to look at the stages that the Gnostic, let's not get caught up on the patriarchy of calling women whores and let's not get caught up into, because it's very easy for us to drop down. We have to just respect the culture from which we are reading and try to gain the symbolism of it. And when we look deeper beyond all of the whore talk and the things that may trigger us to close our ears and not get the true message. What we see are the stages and the challenges that the soul is facing in order for us to go back to oneness. First of all, the soul must recognize the fallen state. She has to renounce her attachment to the material world and its pleasures and turn our light to source energy for guidance and grace. The soul must purify itself from impurities and passions that have accumulated in the body and the mind. This is why we do ancestor work. We don't do ancestor work 
to ring a bell and ask them to bring us something that they are fully embodied within us to help us be able to receive. We do ancestor work so we can identify the behaviors and the conditions that are pervasive amongst the lineages so we can be the chain breakers. We can be the ones that are not out of awareness of the ancestral coding. Do you understand? That's why we live in the body. That's why you have these dis mistranslations saying that we were born in sin. We weren't born in sin as so much as you look at the etymology of that word, which means that we missed the mark. And I'm sorry, yes, we live in a body in which we missed the mark because the Gnostic text and ancient wisdom text and even the King James Version tells you that when you go inside, and you seek the power and the wisdom inside of you and you let that wisdom grow through practice, through awareness and through detachment from the material plane. And it's not that we're not supposed to enjoy the materials. Everything on this planet that is created is created for spiritual people, not for material people. Your material people tear it up. Material people fight over it. Material people war over it. Material people hold and hoard and keep it away out of fear. You know, our rich people are hoarders. They're hoarders out of fear. Once you have, you are stabilized and you have stabilized your wealth for the next seven generations, then the rest of that money belongs to humanity. Period. So we have to deal with the ancestral and past life accumulation of being separated. She has to overcome the temptations and the obstacles that her former lovers placed in her way. She has to become aware of the obstacles that life, that the material world has put in her way, such as fear, doubt, ignorance, and deception. The soul must acquire the knowledge and the power that are necessary for ascent. As long as someone can tell you your entire soul has left your body and you believe in that ish, you will be disempowered. They can sell you any type of poppycock. Come buy this candle to get your soul back. That candle ain't going to get your soul back. I, I do the sage because it helps recode my physical body, not because it's doing anything out there. It's it, the aroma because we are made of waves and we are made of sound and everything has a consciousness and everything chose what to be. When I am uh, doing saging myself, I am recoding frequency for clarity within my own body, not something external. Can't nothing external touch me. My daughter said, well, what? Uh, we are having this conversation. She's like, what if you are possessed? You cannot be possessed. You cannot, nothing can be put on you that is not already within you. So if you are possessed by evil or a negative entity, these are negative entities that are in the ancestral body, that are in the ancestral mindset. And, and we have to do certain things to be able to move past that. But ain't nobody putting nothing on you as so much as they are drawing out that which is already in you. And if you are aware, I got chaos inside of me. I got a deep ancestral code that's laden with missed opportunities, with fear, with grief, with feelings of unworthiness, with feelings of not being faithful. All of these fearful things that live with inside your body, those are the things. And you got to deal with it before you can fully go back. You can't leave source energy in the involution process Come down here, accumulate a whole bunch of BS within your DNA code. And then just, that's why that Christian bull, that Christian stuff about, oh, at the very last breath, you can ask for redemption. Man, lies and poppycock. You're going to come right back here in this body. <laughs> and you're going to have to redo it. 
You got to learn your lessons of love, learn your lessons of compassion, learn your lessons of forgiveness and divine oneness. Spiritual poppycock will have you out here doing a whole bunch of stuff. I did it. And that's why I can tell you that it is poppycock. We have to reconnect ourselves to source energy. The soul must traverse the regions and spheres that separated her from the father's house. She must also face the judgments and the tests that the archons and the ions impose on her and prove her worthiness and her faithfulness to the light. I asked my mother, I said, let me tell you something. I was like, I got to, I'm going to have to have a conversation with source energy. This is some BS. You got to go through all of this before. And she was like, no, mm-mm. No, ma'am, it's supposed to be like this and it needs to be like this. And the deeper I've come into my understanding, she's right. You can't go through, all, you can't go roll around in the mud. What kind of, oh, you know, it's all types of birds that come out in my backyard. Look, you can't, let's just think about this for a second. You at your mama's house and you 12 years old. And you go outside and you rolling around in the dirt and you out there playing rough housing, doing whatever. And you, you, when you left your mama's house, you, you left clean. And when you came back, you got muddy shit on your, on your shoes. You know, you got, you know, twigs all in your hair. You just dirty. <laughs> you just, you just accumulated a lot of mess. Do you, your mama ain't going to let you in the house. This ain't even no like virtuous stuff. It's not even about that. It's about, can you go roll around in the dirt and then walk up in your mom and daddy house? No, hold on. You, it ain't like you can't come in. Hold on. Take that, take that off. Take those shoes off. Don't, don't walk. Don't try. I don't want all that in my presence. I don't want that in my house. And so the trials and tribulations that we are experiencing in life is not, a, you know, it's not about, oh, I'm being punished. It's about that you have accumulated some dirt in your separation. When you left and came into the involution process to self-identify, now you got to drop back into the evolution. You got to evolve back to oneness by slowly addressing these things outside of your body. I'm sorry, but lighting a candle and a crystal and shumbakayas over that thing is not going to assist you. And 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 you're gonna you're gonna go through my timeline and you're gonna be like, huh? <laughs> but I'm telling you, a part of the evolution process is knowing when it's time to walk away from things. And we cannot continue to live in this nonsense. You have to go back through all of those houses that you went into and you picked up things that you wasn't supposed to pick up and you got to deal with it. And then the soul finally reaches the father's house and reunites with the bridegroom. She must also receive the crown and the robe of glory that signify her completion and her perfection. Now you should know in the Gnostic text, when we are talking about this robe of glory, we are talking about our light body. We are talking about the body that is no longer laden down. This is what with spiritual alchemy, shout out to uh, Wisdom Seekers Academy. If you want to join Wisdom Seekers Academy to be able to learn the um, different levels of what you need to do to traverse the soul back to oneness by understanding universal law, which are the rules of reality and understanding the seven steps of spiritual alchemy, which will allow you to be reunited with source energy, with the bridegroom. Earth is mother. Sky is father. And we, when we talk about bringing Orun to Aie, heaven to earth, we are talking about the integration of anionic and cationic energy, the integration of mother and father who have been too separated because of the children, because of us. 
there are many pathways to reuniting with your soul and many misconceptions. Now, in my uh, member group, Wisdom Seekers Collective, you can join for content and I'm going to be going further into the different miscommunication, misconceptions of the soul because the show notes that I'm uh, created for today and for this beautiful, wonderful soul that reached out to me and said that they are, that they were told that their soul left their body. Beloved, this is to you and any other of the spiritual charlatans out here that tell you that you don't have a soul, you soulless, and they got to do this, that, and the other, and kill a ram, and you got to pay $5,000 to do this and it. No, you don't. This is what I want you to do. I want you to invest in your wellness for a soul wellness check, okay? That's what I do. I will let you know by checking in with source energy, your ancestors and your guides to see why you are disconnected from your soul. What are the traumas? What are the fear blockages? What are the things that you have adopted and allowed in your experience to tell you or give you the impression that you are disconnected from your soul? And then I'm going to give you an eight to nine page guide that can help you reconnect with your soul. And this can happen if you are having physical ailments, if you are having mental ailments, spiritual energy, it doesn't matter because it's all energy. And so whether your body is experiencing discomfort and dis-ease or whether you are emotionally feeling the discomfort and dis-ease that will eventually go into your body and take you up on out of here. Remember what Baba Odu Sholo Osayin said on Wednesdays with Odu, now if I unveil, that comes out every Wednesday. What did he say? He said, if your ori can't kill you, nothing can. And I just told you, ori is a part of the soul's archetype. It is the container of consciousness and identity that fuel your existence on this planet. And so regardless of whatever ancient wisdom teaching that you are using to apply to your current modern situation, no, you are never separated from source. You are never separated from your soul. There is only a remembrance and an awareness that is needed. If you have chaos in your life and you are struggling for peace and joy, I am not the person you come to if you want to know the eight steps to being a billionaire or the 10 steps to getting it. No, we doing real work. We cleaning out the ancestral body. We are accessing our crown chakra so we can know who we really are. And then we are using that to purify and refine ourselves so that we can return to being the divine true humans that we truly are. I want you to join me here um, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and occasionally in between as I seek to mm, deconstruct, decolonize, and break down the spiritual and religious dogma that has led us astray, all right? So I will leave you with the great words of Yahshua on the Sermon of the Mount. Tu bwahun, la maskine e, baruch, dilhone makuta dashmaya. Ripe, mature, and ready are those who live by breathing oneness. There I can is included in God's, okay? You can do all things, okay? Through Christ's consciousness that strengthens you to be able to walk through and transverse the muddiness of the material world and return to one source energy. And if you need help doing that, I would be happy to be your guide. You can go to nasabawa.com, learn more about me and learn more how I serve humanity 
in the name of Source Energy. You guys have a great day. Ashe, ashe, ashe.